You're almost done with your very first song. Now that your chords and melodies are done, and you've set some harmonies up to go with your melodies, you can now add in the instruments. Because we're making this tutorial without assuming that you have any specific sound source, most of the names we will mention here are real instruments. For example, the famous romantic TP from the Edro SD series is a trumpet, while Reed Morantz from the SD80 and SD90 is a saxophone. When working with Pyramidi, your DAW will most likely provide a list of patches to select from, named directly after the real instruments that each patch represents. If you're using a sound font or sound module, the instruments may be given names that are slightly less descriptive. But sound fonts that span an entire set of instruments available in MIDI will almost certainly be ordered in the same way that you would get when you just work with MIDI. Some sound sources may contain multiple versions of the same instruments for the same patch number. At any given point in a song, there are four main groups of instruments being used. Melody, progression, bass line, drums. These four groups occupy different frequency niches without overlapping too much. For melodies and harmonies, you can use whatever instrument you want. Trumpets and saxophones, as we mentioned before, may be the first thing to come to mind, but square or saw synths are also common choices. You can even try violins, flutes, glockenspiels, though it depends on what energy level your melody has. Anything goes, although you do need to make sure that the instrument has enough presence. Also considering having more than just one instrument play the same melody to reinforce the strength of the sound. String ensemble sound filling and thus are great for filling up the mid-range frequencies of your song. They are usually used to play the chord progressions of your song as block chords. If three chord tones still doesn't seem to sound thick enough, you can stack one extra chord tone onto your string chords for a total of four notes at once to thicken the sound of the strings. Of course, make sure the strings don't compete with the other instruments too much, frequency-wise. Remember to experiment with different inversions to find what range the string chords fit the best in between the melody and the bass. You can also distribute notes that would otherwise be played by string ensembles, the choir odds, and church organs. Meanwhile, for comp sections, such as intros or climax portions that would later explode instrumentally, you can consider playing an arpeggiated version of the chord progression using a piano or harpsichord. Every toho song contains some form of bass. The bass fills in the lower ranges of the song, so it gives punch to the sound of the song. You usually want the bass to play notes from the chord, especially the chords root and fifth. During slow sections, you can just have it hold the root note of the chord. During faster sections, you can have it alternate between the root and the fifth of the chord in order to increase the energy level without affecting the harmony too much. Some synthesizers include a quick way to get a bass line with minimal effort, in the form of arpeggiator functionalities. By playing a root note in MIDI, the synthesizer will play back an entire pattern for the duration of that note. Ten Desires, in particular, makes extensive use of this type of bass. Though percussion journey lacks melodic ideas since they are mostly unpitched, they are very important as they provide rhythm, energy, and a strong beat to keep the whole music together. There are many different types of percussion instruments, but in Toho music, we will only be focusing on the following. Kick, snares, hi-hats, crashes, rides, toms. Depending on how you use a percussion, it can be an effective way to increase or decrease the energy level of a section. Personally, I find that Toho percussion resembles that of rock music. Your kick gives the main beat rhythm of your music. Generally, in the 4-4 time signature song, you would want to put them on the 1st and 3rd beat as the 1st and 3rd beats are regarded as the strong beats, while the 2nd and 4th beat are regarded as the weak beats. Since basses also serve to keep rhythm, it would be a good idea to play your kicks as they were a supplement to your bass lines. Snares naturally have a powerful sound to them, so they are good at defining segments that need extra power, energy, and highlighting. They might overpower your other instruments if they aren't well controlled, so be careful. Snares often go on the second and fourth beats of the song. In Toho, there are two types of hi-hats mainly being used, closed hi-hats and open hi-hats. Closed hi-hats in Toho are often played in quick succession, usually two or four times per beat. Since closed hi-hats sound pretty light, it will not impact your song much if you spam them this way. Because of this, sometimes the song spams his closed hi-hats everywhere. Open hi-hats sound a little stronger than closed hi-hats, so they are often only played as often as snares are. The pedal hi-hat also exists, but it does not show up very often in Toho music. You can substitute a single closed hi-hat every so often for a pedal hi-hat for some variety, especially when playing hi-hats in quick succession. 
Crashes sound super powerful. Most of the time, you only use them on the first beat of an 8-bar section. When you're transitioning to the next section, you can also play it on either the first or third beat of the measure immediately before that next section. Rides are a light, lingering sound of tapping, in contrast to more explosive crashes. This means you can use these more often than crashes without the percussion section sounding like a big mess. Rides are versatile, as you can use them like a less freaking hi-hat. Where rides can be played alongside every few kicks. Toms are drums that have the most definite pitch. How many different tom pitches there are depends on which drum set you're using. Generally, there will be four. Toms are useful for leading towards or ending a high energy section. For transitioning between sections or looping your melody, we recommend using a flurry of percussion notes. As mentioned before, feel free to place a crash at the beginning or middle of the last measure of a melody. Tom's main use is here as well. You roll your toms in descending pitch, preferably with the highest pitch tom starting half a beat before the middle of the measure. Generally, for a low energy section, your drums will be played less often to match. Playing kicks on the first and seventh beats every two measures is useful for keeping the energy level low. Snares can be played once per measure on the third beat. Open hi-hats can also be cut down to once per measure, but since open hi-hats aren't as strong as snares are, you can still continue playing the open hi-hat. On the other hand, if your section increases in energy, you should also play drum hits more often. This is especially true at the second half of a climax section. Generally, you would play your kicks and snares twice as quickly. You can choose to play your open hi-hats in between every beat, with closed or pedal hi-hats in between the open hi-hats. As a bonus, here's a simple method for composing slow to whole style drums. We start off simple with the kick and close hi-hat on each beat, also adding an open hi-hat spaced evenly between each beat on the half beats. Next, decide on which type of snare pattern you want. For purposes of this example, we'll be using the basic slow snare pattern, so place snares on beats 2 and 4 like so. Now that you have a bass pattern to work with, you can begin to fill it in with more kicks. This is something that you eventually just get a feel for. You want it to fit the song without becoming too overwhelming. Now that you have the kicks filled in, there is yet another optional fill in that we can use, closed hi-hats. For these, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Sun has been seen filling in every single 16th note space that isn't occupied with an open hi-hat with a closed one. However, what I like to do is emphasize the areas that were not filled in with the kick drum. Give me a something like this. Add in some fills, and we're done. Sometimes, your song seems like it has the right amount of notes, but feels too cluttered. Yet, if you remove some of the notes, it's too empty. There are ways to preserve the notes and fine-tune their presence. Velocity is a second form of volume control for individual notes, representing the force with which the note is played. The higher the velocity, the greater the force used, and the louder the note will sound. By reducing the velocity of some notes, you leave more room for other sounds. I recommend reducing the velocity of your harmonies and some hi-hat notes. You can also play around with the velocity of snares at the end of sections. In a band or orchestra, all the instruments are stationed slightly apart from each other. Similarly, you can imagine every instrument positioned somewhere from the left to the right of the listener. However, when creating a channel for an instrument, it's panned to the center by default. That's like if all your musicians stood in a single file during a performance. Panning an instrument to the left of the listener reduces its presence on the right side, and vice versa. In Toho style, we don't often pan our instruments too far into the extremes. Note that these are just guidelines. I myself break these guidelines often, in fact. If you're specifically trying out different styles in your music, such as swing, reggae, or Latin, they follow different guidelines than the ones shown here. All in all, just experiment around and use your musical instincts until you get something that sounds good.